uh, this morning another understanding of Dachan abundance. Divine abundance of grain or dagang. <laughs> okay, dagang. All right, which means actually uh, grain. So it has the dalet, the gimel, and the noon. All right, which speaks of a seed that is eternal. So if you can see this picture, which I found, yeah. Food, grapes, you have uh, Karim and uh, Giffen inside here. <laughs> Grape, the whole vineyard. Okay. Uh, bread, wheat, okay, oil. All right. And look at where it is dropping. Can you see what these are? Ah, yes, Delia. All right. The people of God, the sons and children, sons and daughters, children of God. You're going to see how God is providing divine abundance. Chinese New Year, everyone say kong, uh, people will say kong pa choy, right? They want choy, fat. <laughs> but we already got the fat, the fat here, right? Dashen is fat. The abundance belongs to the children of God. Let's look into the word. <clears throat> so go back again a little bit very quickly to Acts chapter 2. Remember, Acts, the book of Acts is the First, ah, first church. All right. So very important that we go back to our origin. All right, because we have uh, the detoured far from it. <laughs> all right. So let let's begin to see how the Holy Spirit came and what uh, happened after that. Peter stood up with the eleven apostles and shouted to the crowd, "Listen carefully, my fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. You need to clearly understand what's happening here." Very important is clarity, understanding or revelation. Right? What happened to the church after the book of Acts throughout the years, even up to 2,000 years until today is they're no longer <laughs> confusion, yeah. confused. All right? Don't know what is church. Many think that it was a building <laughs> right? and they don't even know why you are what's a Christian. <laughs> right? Having a lot of, uh, just go to church daily. So that has been part of your life uh, for the last five, ten years, then we need to clearly understand okay, what is happening. What is happening at that point when the Holy Spirit came upon the church of Jesus Christ, the first church that was born again. These people are not drunk like you think they are, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. So we have been reading earlier what happened, right? When the Holy Spirit came, right? Fill them. They were like people who were drunk. They were not behaving normal. That means not using their intellect and reasoning to, to do what they uh, used to do, right? In your intellect and reasoning is what? I sit down quietly. It's supposed to be very quiet in the, in the house of God, right? But then suddenly, the Holy Spirit came. Boom! <laughs> Whoosh! A strong wind, like a strong wind, and it overcame Talia. Dalia, I see Dalia, all same. <laughs> all so beautiful, the, the names that God gave you all. And what happened? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke with new tongues. And they began to behave like what the other outside people who didn't experience it, look at them and say, Dalia is drunk or what? And then say, Paul Peter stood up and said, no, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Nobody gets drunk in the natural wine at this time. So we need to clearly understand the reality of being born again and being filled with the Holy Spirit because every one of God's sons and daughters during this time were powerful disciples of the Lord, powerful. Okay, And today, here, now, even in this year of 2000. 2024, each one of you are very, very powerful, right? Once you are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, who is scared of you? Yeah, yeah. are you scared of the devil? <laughs> no more, okay? If you learn who you are, understand, that's why I said you need to clearly understand. Apostle Peter is speaking to us. We need to clearly understand what's happening. Otherwise, the, your life will be the devil chase you round and round. Right? 
But one day when you grow up and you know who you are in Christ, even the little ones, right, Gashim, uh, Karim and uh, Gashan, right? Given, <laughs> okay, right? If their spirit man is strong, built up in God's word, they can do miracles. I've seen with my own eyes in early days where I have more interaction with the uh, churches or internationally charismatic little ones, young ones, you can even be younger than, than, than them in physical age. They go around praying for people, miracles happening, right? So this is how powerful your spirit man is, okay? So let's continue. This is the fulfillment. So what, what was happening there in, in the book of Acts, in the big, uh, Pentecost, is a fulfillment of what was prophesied through the prophet Joel. So not everything happens according to prophecy. Okay, so that's why you have the Old Testament and the New Testament. So in uh, Joel is a prophet, one of the minor prophets, and look at what he prophesied years before Jesus came and Holy Spirit came. For God says, who says? <laughs> okay, when you read Bible, remember uh, Hannah, it is God speaking, okay? <laughs> it's not, the Bible is not just another book that we read to find knowledge, okay? It is God speaking, just like your WhatsApp messages, all right, and messages from your loved ones, Anderson sent to Dahlia, hey, correct, huh? okay, <laughs> confused, confused, okay, all right? Those are messages from your loved ones, right? When you do WhatsApp, when you do MSN or whatever, they are from your loved ones. And then when the Bible you read is from who? God is your? <laughs> your loved one also, right? The one who loves you. It's a real person, okay, Hannah? Okay, yeah, why I always call Hannah? Because she always <laughs> blur, blur. She thinks that God must appear, okay? No more, huh? He is here already in the spirit. If you, God were to open our spiritual eyes this morning, you will see angels right here with us. Angels sitting next to our brother Anderson, right? Taking care and uh, making sure Giffen is sleeping nicely, right? Yeah, protecting uh, Uncle Nathaniel who, you know, like a young man wants to get up very fast. <laughs> yeah, he, there are angels. Right, the Bible tells us that each one has a guardian angel, right, to watch over us, to take care of us. You can read in Psalms 91, right? Delia is eating more and more the word of God, which is your lover Jesus talking to you. God is saying, okay, so read the Bible differently. Don't read it as another storybook. God says, this is what I will do in the last days. All right, and that was already 2,000 years ago when Jesus came. And right now, we are also living in the time of the last days before the second coming of Jesus. I will do what? Yes, pour out my spirit. So this is what was prophesied. You know what's prophecy? Uh, like we go to, without God, we go to fortune teller and they will tell you, ah, 20 years later, you will marry so-and-so, 30 years later like this. So something of the future that's going to happen, that's prophecy, right? So this already prophesied, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's why the devil is so scared of this incident happening, right? He blocked all the minds of the people that this could be of the devil and so forth, so forth, so forth. But this is already prophesied, all right? A lot of prophets already spoke. Okay, about this incident that is going to happen, that Peter says, you need to clearly understand what is happening. So what is happening has already been foretold, okay, in the uh, Old Testament. I'm going to pour out my spirit on everybody, TPT, and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. You'll be speaking, all right, things in the spirit, spiritual, and your young men will see visions, uh, old men. Okay, we got some nice, handsome, <laughs> white hat, young old men. Okay, experiencing dreams from God. So dreams and visions are in the spiritual realm. Okay, but well, this is going to happen. All right, so don't be surprised if you see visions, right? Uh, roof, yeah. These are part of it. Dahlia will be seeing visions too, right? As you put yourself in the Word, eat more, 
One day you will prophesy. It means you just speak God's word, which are spirit and life. You speak prophecy, words of life to your children, to your family. Okay? They are very powerful because they are words from God. God say one. Okay? And the Holy Spirit will come upon all my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. <clears throat> So this is the prophecy, Joel, Joel 2.23. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Yeah, because the days are coming right, where they will be very, very happy. For he have given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So what is this former rain and latter rain? Okay, let's look. Former rain is more, okay, which is archer, actual meaning, or teacher, or teaching. You see, Hebrew has many words and all, a lot of it has been translated into one simple word, like for example here, rain. But not all rain is the physical rain. It is a translation. So in this particular verse or scripture, it is not the normal rain here because the word actually is more. And more means teacher or teaching or early rain. Okay, a teacher of righteousness according to righteousness. That means there will be teaching coming to the church, to the people of God. Okay, and Yes, last week I talked about teaching. What is revelation? All right, understanding. Latter rain, melkosh. All right, so now it is the, <clears throat> the spring rain where they gather in <clears throat> and take everything after the, uh, they have been sowing, all right, to gather the after crop. So if you are a farmer, this will be easier to understand. Okay. So the threshing floors, okay, Prophet Joel, Joel mentioned all this, okay. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow or abundance with abundance with new wine and oil. A threshing floor, an open area, okay, it can be, not everyone now is a, a farmer, okay, but <clears throat> you have your work and all that. In the open area, open space, God's blessing is upon there. There will be grain. What do we use grain for? You eat straight away. <laughs> huh? ah, yeah, but it will, after that, it is part of the ingredients of your, your staple food, bread. You use grain, rice. Yeah, it's one, sort, one kind of grain. Okay, that means it's provision, it's food. Okay, there will be an overflow. There will the, the you will have full of wheat and also new wine and oil. Okay, so this is part of what's going to happen after the Holy Spirit, with or rather with the coming of the Holy Spirit outpouring. Okay, I like this. Came across this picture. You have corn. You have all the food that Rachel likes, and then it will come as oil. Okay. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. So we are singing in the high places. Actually, the Bible says, where are we seated? Huh? <laughs> where is the scripture? <laughs> Ephesians, we are seated in heavenly places. So who is the we? The spirit man, right? Because physically, all of you are seated here, isn't it? Physically, yes. The spirit man is up there. You are seated in a different place at the right hand of the Father. So if you build your spirit man and fill your mind with the word of God, you will be walking <laughs> a spirit being powerful. You will know that you are, Dahlia is God's right hand man, woman, <laughs> right? The thing we are living here, like a, you know, in struggle, in stress and all that, is we still haven't seen where our spirit man is. We are still so locked into this world 
of the physical material world, right? How to live like Jesus? Okay, so we don't have to try to live like Jesus. It's your spirit, man. It's knowing the word of God where he tell us who you are in Christ. So can you imagine if we don't realize we are seated with him at his right hand, we are only in the physical, we will say, Lord, I'm sitting here. I'm so pitiful, so, so kalian, right? <laughs> okay, but when you know God's word, so I'm not kalian, right? I am very blessed at the right hand of the Father, which means I'm so close to Daddy God, I ask anything He will give me. Okay, so here it says, They shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. And Jeremiah is another prophet okay, who prophesied about the children of Israel coming and together in, with God's goodness for wheat, for wine, for oil, and the young of the flock and of the herd, their soul shall be as a watered garden. They shall not sorrow anymore. Yeah, this is a promise, a prophecy of blessing. <clears throat> so wheat, <coughs> wine, and oil. <clears throat> wheat. What is wheat? So what wheat is one of the main promises that God said He will give His children. Is dogon. Actually, in the uh, Eastern culture, they have a god of dagon, idol. Dagon is it? <laughs> Why you know? Eh? Ah, that is the idol, okay? And that is supposed to be a god who will give them san choi, choi san, sorry, <laughs> okay? To the Jews or the, the, the people living that time, they have a choi san, okay? Which is the god of prosperity, the god of increase, which is not god, but they call him da gong, right? The, the idol. And of course, coming before the Lord, the Lord is greater. Our Lord is the real God of prosperity. Even as now, uh, right now, everyone is Chinese, are celebrating Chinese New Year. Many pray to the God of prosperity to prosper them. Uh, we have the real God of prosperity. All right. And this Dagong, all right, is uh, the, the word Dagang actually means, or Dagong means wheat. Okay. Actually means increase, grain, corn, flour. Wheat, cereal, grain, corn. And we, we know this is the physical blessing for sustenance. All right? So that is Dagang. <clears throat> Dagang is a natural neutral name of Hebrew origin given to those with great promise of abundance. All right? Some people call their children Dagang. Dagong. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Which means they have promise of abundance abundance hannah you got promise of abundance okay because you belong to jesus all right you are god's child okay meaning grain dagang embodies the essence of fertility a plentiful harvest fertile so in the uh oh, in the promises blessings of obedience you have also fertility the womb, the fruit of your womb is blessed, right? That means for the children of Israel, at that time, all they need to do is to follow the commandments, the instructions of God, and they will always be fertile in their womb. They will have children, plenty, because that was the promise that God gave to who? Abraham. Yeah, Abraham, he said, your descendants shall multiply. How to multiply if the women don't give birth? <laughs> okay, so it was a blessing, a promise of abundance, fertility, fertile. Today in Christ, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law, all right, which is from, you will see, miscarriage, which is the opposite of fertile, right? It's not a blessing, it is a curse. Jesus has taken the curse of the law. Where? No, I'm sorry, the scripture. 
<laughs> Galatians 3. Why? You still don't know. <laughs> they are exempted. <laughs> the newborn baby. Hey, the rest very... Uh, you need to know where your uh, covenant is, where your authority is on your blessings. It is not sin that it, those who are of the works of the law are under the curse. But Jesus has become a curse for us. So when we try to do good, try to do things, then yeah, we come under the law. All right? And then if that means you put yourself under law, you try to obey and you can't obey, then the curse comes upon you. But when you live under grace, whereby you, fall, you are in Christ, you just need to be hungry for the word of God and know who God is and who you are. You don't live under curse anymore. You live under the blessing. All right, of fertility and abundance. That's why a right thinking is very important according to what God say and not according to uh, what we think. Then it's also fertility can be in the womb of a, a woman as well as your, your animals, children and all that. This is your blessing. Claim it. It is yours. Okay, plentiful harvest belongs to us. The noun is grain or dagang. The verb is to multiply or increase. So that we, we are in the year of pay dalet, and one of the dalet, the, the words that start with dalet is dagang, dagong, <laughs> okay, which is grain. All right, which is multiplication and increase. Remember, Rachel, multiply. Forgot already. And still remember, multiply everything that we have in our hands will multiply now how does it multiply does it apply to every person on this earth or every person who supposedly go to church or had a christian name it is supposed to be given to them but if you don't know it it's not yours i give you an example right many times right you have a pop a little boy all right this example is given a little boy begging at the roadside Anyone can continue the story for me? <laughs> I think I did say 10,000 times. <laughs> okay. So this little boy was at the roadside begging. Begging is asking for money, right? That means he's poor. Or at least he thinks he's poor. So have you seen beggars before? Ah, Myanmar got a lot, okay? So they no money, all right? So they sit down there and they have a container and they wait for people to put some money inside then came one lady one woman all right before she put in anything she asked the little boy say boy there is a little red book now all wait wear red right next to you it still doesn't ring any bell you know how many times i've told this story <laughs> oh my goodness okay <laughs> i told many many times okay then Say, there is a little red book next to you, boy. Can I? What is inside there? The boy said, what? <laughs> I don't know. I cannot read. He doesn't know because he's illiterate. He doesn't know how to read. Okay? Then the, girl, the woman said, okay, give the book to me. Then the woman who was able to read, look at the book. It's a savings book. <laughs> it's got a lot of money inside. I hope to this morning you can get it already. <laughs> Meaning the boy is not poor. It's rich. But he doesn't know he's rich. Because he cannot read. Clear enough? <laughs> Alright. So we are all where is the Bible verse that says we are rich in Christ? I think that Delia would know more. I must give her more. You come into the this one. This one not yet. She haven't learned yet. <laughs> That's why I say come into the uh, main family group. What? Second Corinthians eight nine. For, the, for you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that though he was infinitely rich, yet he became poor so that you through his poverty daily might become rich and he already fulfilled that when he died on the cross so that you can be can become rich but don't become like poor beggar boy on the roadside still thinking that we are poor many christians still begging god please bless me god i got no money i'm so poor right yeah, they got a little, we got a little red book, the Bible, right, where it is, it is written, it is written, Dahlia is a rich woman in Christ, first, right? And when you know that from your spirit, the riches will manifest, all right, because that's what God said so, but we first need to know. So, you see, if you don't catch all this, how are you all one day going to become teachers of the word? <laughs> right? You have no illustration. Okay? With the word and no illustration, who will listen to you? <laughs> right? There's revelation. Okay, these stories that I give you, illustrations, are actually preachers have used it throughout many, many years. Right? To illustrate, some are very good to illustrate certain things because you think, oh, every Christian is supposed to be rich. Now you can understand. Right, the little boy who didn't read, all right, what is his inheritance? And of course, don't believe. Some may read and not believe, all right? So, grain multiply or increase. Psalms 65, you visit the earth, verse 9, and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. Today, a lot of promises for Delia. She loves God's promises, yeah, Delia? Yes, it is God telling you, this is what I have done for you, Dahlia. Jesus on the cross now guaranteed that you can inherit all this, right? The covenant, just now we sang the first song, your covenant, our firm foundation. If you don't know what is in your, written in all the clauses of your covenant, you will live that, that poor boy, poor in spirit, poor in life, every aspect poor. Whereas God said, you are rich. I have given you all this. So know his promises. Know what he has promised you. Receive, believe it and receive it. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain. You have prepared it. God is the source. Right? Your, your, your water is riches abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. Showers is robib, robib, okay, which is copious showers. It brings fertility in the natural, yeah, rain and shower bring your crops grow, okay. If you are a farmer, the most saddest thing is when there is no rain, yeah, no water, no rain, you cannot grow, okay. And water also signify or resemble the word of God. If we don't have, you don't water uh, our, our uh, giving, our, uh, we don't have the word of God water us until we are so wet and drenched and overflowing with God's word. How can God's promises manifest okay, in our lives? So if we have the water, the showers that will bring fertility, even a dead womb can become alive. We speak the word of God to it, right? The dead ground can become fertile. A prophetic influence or an accumulation of drops of shower okay, from dew to showers. Okay. And it comes from the word rabab, which means many, right? Much, great. So it's accumulation, become rain. Rain is accumulated of different small drops of water. Increase in number to multiply by the myriad increase. Be many, be multiplied, tens of thousands. Yeah, this is all in your spirit man. We have been learning in uh, on Saturday about the spirit man, neshama, the different letters. You still haven't got the revelation? <laughs> okay. Huh? What? Ah, so where is it? The mind says I'm poor because you look at the your savings book and right? which part of you can 
actually agree and say that you are rich. Yeah, but if you don't pay your spirit man, knock out spirit man. Every time KO and the spirit man in most Christians, <laughs> KO by the mind, right? By the five senses. Say, no, 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 I'm poor. Cannot work one. This one cannot work. That one impossible. That one, uh, so many things because limited by the human limitation. Only your spirit man that feed on God's word realize that no, I will have increase. I will multiply. There will be blessing in my life. There will be fertility. Understand? It is your spirit man this morning that is receiving these words of God because this word of God, promises of God are food for your spirit man. For your mind, if you are listening to your, your, with your mind, you will say, where got increase, leh? where got money, man? where got a lot, right? The mind, right? That's why the mind needs to be renewed, right? What God is speaking, is speaking to your spirit. And only your born again spirit, Anderson, can receive all oh, the abundance from God. God speaking to you, okay? That there is increase, multiplication in your spirit, all right? In God's purpose for your life. You crown the year with your goodness, your paths drip with abundance or dashen fatness. So this is what God is doing for beautiful ashes, everyone in 2024. But if we don't understand it, then we can even miss it. But remember the first verse, Peter said, you need to understand <laughs> what is happening. Revelation. Okay, so we are going to enjoy their chain fatness and don't want anyone. I don't really will be very sad if anyone is like little, little boy, <laughs> okay, who listen to this Darshan abundance and like all the others in the world, they say, okay, hopefully we will have abundance. Hopefully, all right, without understanding and think that they are still poor. All right, no, nope, they're still like the little boy. Don't know <laughs> what he has, the inheritance. Okay. Deuteronomy 8 18. <clears throat> and you shall remember. So before this, uh, this on Chinese, like, ah, uh, fat, yeah, fat. Uh. <laughs> okay, this verse, uh, I give Dahlia. The older ones, the older one to commit. I, I, I leave you behind already. <laughs> these are the wealth, these are the words that, you know, God is saying to you, why don't we meditate, believe, okay? You shall remember the Lord your God. It is who? He. It is Dahlia's God, Dahlia's heavenly father, who gives Dahlia the power or ability to get wealth or make wealth, all right? We don't go for money. Money is not our God. When God is your God, God will give you the power or ability to get well. So what is this? Is he going to rain millions of dollars from the sky? How did the Jews become wealthy? <laughs> huh? Correct. They follow the commandments. All right. They follow. So there were many commandments at that time, instructions. Okay. So we are not lawful. That means if you have to obey, then you will bless. But the other way around, we know that Christ already met all the requirements of the law. Now we receive, we believe in Christ, we receive him and we benefit. We are the beneficiary provided you know what Christ has done for you. And there are still a few things to do which we love to do, right? In order for wealth to flow, abundance to flow in our lives, okay? Because in the new covenant, it is written there, all right? <clears throat> but it will give you what the Jews have was very intuition, what you call today the spirit man receiving ideas. They were the inventors. They were the creators of many things in this world that we enjoy today that, has, that bring a lot of money and wealth. Isn't it? The Jews were actually the richest people on this planet. So King Solomon until today, his uh, <clears throat> wealth is still the most compared to <clears throat> the others. So what happened to them? God gave them ideas. They were bankers, a lot of them. Okay? They know how, they have the wisdom of God, how to handle money. Right? Without wisdom, today you can strike 4D, 2 million, just within one, two months, all gone. No wisdom. So we need God's wisdom. All right? How to handle 
money. And many go to the world there to learn from motivation, whereas the Bible tells us if we are God's people, the Jews already know, God already tell them how do they handle money, what they do with money, what do they do with grain, with the wheat. Anyone knows? Yes, if you look into the, uh, because they got covenant, you understand covenant agreement with God, they were covenant people. And one of the instructions that God put down, put to them under covenant is that they are to bring all their tithes and offerings. When they do that to God, they're acknowledging God as the God of Dagon, the, the one who, who put the source of blessing, right? This is very important. You will see Jews and even Arabs, they have tithing and they are sedaka offering. They give. But we come to the new creation. <laughs> Stingy. <laughs> okay. So we miss that out because we have thought that we keep, 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 and we will get a lot <laughs> and multiply. But when God's principles are different, right? And then He will give you the ideas, He will give you the power to get even more wealth. Okay, you will see this is very interesting. Abundance. All right. As soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance, the fruit, first fruits of corn, wheat, wine, oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly so when we think of abundance most of the time we think okay yes god bless me with abundance god multiply me give me corn give me oil give me wheat give me more money everything do you see how the jews all right under solomon and king david became so prosperous when they receive all those things <clears throat> the blessings of god what do they do they give if they are what what is abundant here they are tithes and their offerings <laughs> abundant right abundant so this is how the whole cycle goes how god's economy right among his people he blesses us we put back in the storehouse we keep on going back to him the abundance what is abundance increase what does that in today's term hannah what is a sudden abundance or increase of the field in today okay after you think okay this one i'm not a farmer lah. i got no corn no wine no oil no honey anyone anna huh a lot okay name something like chinese new year now you got a lot of ang pao there's abundance what else besides your normal monthly pay what do you have once a year bonus isn't that abundance the thing is we don't see we yes overflowing what is up from your normal what did the jews do they bring all back god, god don't ask us for all that he said only the tight <laughs> only the 10 percent. anytime there is an extra income extra blessing right in the jews mindset yeah god first the 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 tight comforts right the offerings and so forth because god is the one who gives the extra but most of us we got the extra oh well, i'm going to buy something with this <laughs> right so does it god is not don't want you to buy things god going to bless you daily more than you can ever think or imagine because that's his promise right he's not against us having one things that we enjoy or food that you want to eat right he gives you a lot of food to eat right rachel but he wants us to look to him all right, and come under that whole the open space of his open heaven where he become the source of our life and then you will experience abundance right in your life without even you know sometimes we see some money and we're oh, so happy no begin to see it is a common thing right for god to be blessing us again and again you can john chapter one or chapter it says what he gives us again and again give after give grace after grace right let us see so the increase of our field the, the problem is sometimes we don't see but i know now if when uh, when we are 
building the spirit man, we become more aware of him. When you first wake up in the morning, in the past, you'll be quickly, go do all your housework <laughs> or manual things, go to work and all that. I hope by now, after three years or so, you have become more conscious of him, that you wake up before you run to the bathroom to brush your teeth. Huh? <laughs> Whatever it is, just know that there is God in your life now. Talia, you don't have to worry anymore. Jesus has come into your life to be your spiritual husband. Abba Father is your spiritual father to take care of you. Holy Spirit is your tour guide, <laughs> All right? To guide you into the spiritual realm and bring those things from the spiritual realm to manifest in the physical. First, in the spiritual is the peace and the joy because we cannot make wise decisions when we are troubled, when we are anxious, when we are worried, right? Yeah, when you have all this anxiety, can you make decisions? Even the world tells you don't make decisions. We will make all wrong decisions, right? So how to make decision for a, a wise decision for a wealth to increase? Right. First, he gives you peace. He gives you rest. He gives you joy. And in that peace and calm, he can speak to you. You can talk to him and you can hear him telling you what you should do, how to sort out whatever problems on this physical world that the, may throw, be thrown at you. It, who can solve it? Only Holy Spirit, because he knows all things. So if you know the Holy Spirit, know God's word, you have the answers and the keys to every problem in life. That's why Paul says that we are more than conquerors to Christ who love us, knowing he loves us. So to be aware and conscious of him in your life, make you a different person from anyone walking out there. You have the answer to everything in life. Everything is in the word. Everything, every solution is in the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. If it is something not clearly written, like, you know, uh, close this, don't close this deal, close this deal. It's not inside the Bible, right? But that is when you need to hear the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and he is promised to us to be the one guiding us if we acknowledge him. Okay, I think, I mean, this is, I don't have to do it because, uh, uh, who is this guy? Um, the one who wrote, Good Morning Holy Spirit, the totai of uh, Catherine Kuhlman. <laughs> Suddenly, and a Jew. Uh, what's his name? Uh? Suddenly slipped my mind. Ah, Benny Hinn. Yeah, Benny Hinn. All right. The, who, who also, who, who got the uh, uh, anointing or gifting from <clears throat> Catherine Kuhlman, a very, actually, actually Delia looked a bit like Catherine Kuhlman. <laughs> Tall and thin. You should have a look at her. Very powerful woman of God. Yeah. And passed on to um, Benny Hinn. Still around, Benny Hinn is still alive. Yeah. And uh, how he wrote this book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. The closest friend that you have besides Jesus Christ should be Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said what? I go to my heavenly father and I send to you one person so powerful who knows all things and can teach you all things. It's the Holy Spirit. It's your personal tutor, guide, teacher. But y'all don't bother. <laughs> See? Huh? You don't even have to pay for him, right? Pay, we, we give tuition to our children or whatever, you have to pay tuition fees, right? Jesus paid the price for us to be guided by this person who knows the spiritual realm, physical realm, who knows how to handle your business more than you do, or lead you in or out from one to another. And yet, we don't want. Okay, that is the lie of the devil that caused you to keep on living the way you used to live the last 40, 50 years without the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Get to know the Holy Spirit. Hunger for the Word of God like treasure. Yeah? You see money, we run after it. <laughs> see God's Word? I oh, never mind. Lah. Never have that attitude because God's Word is very powerful. It can lead to every blessing in your life if you realize this is God speaking. That is revelation. Okay. God will provide rain, mata, 
This for the seed you sow, Yara. I, I, I taught that in the uh, Zara, sorry, Zara, in the ground. So seed must be sown in the ground. So you cannot say, Lord, I have this seed. Uh, you uh, ask uh, Elijah. Okay, I want to have a, a papaya tree, papaya fruit. I got papaya seed. This is the papaya seed. What are you going to do with it? Or the other one is? Eat it. <laughs> if you eat the seed, will you have the fruit? Yeah, you need to plant it, right? Sown into the ground. So the, spiritually, Paul already tells us a lot in 2 Corinthians 9 what to do. Seed, basically, uh, I think uh, last week, um, youth ministry, right? Ruth talked about uh, the quiz. Uh. <laughs> okay, uh, in the Bible, what are the two main things that seed represent? Ah, word of God and money. It's your seed. Why are you not using the seed? Hmm? You see, that is what we call lack of revelation. <laughs> when you hear something and you don't do it, you haven't got the revelation. All right, it's just head knowledge. But if you realize how powerful is that seed in your hand and you plant it, it will grow, it will bear fruit. Okay, so wait till the thing comes. Huh? <laughs> okay, if the thing comes, you sow the seed in the ground and the food the ground produces, the grain that grows will be rich and abundant, fat and plentiful. On that day, your cattle will graze in large pastures. This is the promise of God. It's in the area of sowing. Okay. <clears throat> The power to get wealth, God has made it very simple. All right? When we sow, we will reap. We sow generously, we reap abundantly or generously. All right? This is God's word. I cannot change it. Although many times I just like, Lord, Holy Spirit, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> All right? Because why? We always fear, especially pastors, that people will misunderstand us, that we want their money. But then, this is the key, all right? It's so simple. You sow a seed, it will grow. Hmm? It is not God need your money, but we need to sow. We need God, okay? <clears throat> so, Joel 2, 25, And I will restore to you, restore. Look at this. I just saw it only while I was preparing this. Man. It's a restore. <laughs> okay, whatever the worm took out from your store, the devil has taken in your life, the peace, the joy, the money, the wealth, everything that he has stolen from you in your storeroom. Now, God is going to restore. Woo! You know what that means? Pull back. <laughs> You're going to pull back all that the devil has stolen from your lives. Ah, whether it's spiritual or material, God promised to restore. Okay, for the Jewish nation, which is today we are also children of Abraham by faith, right? I will restore. Oh, you like it or not? Your storehouse restore. Okay, and then God says in Malachi 3.10 also, right, bring your tithes into the storehouse, yeah, which is the house of God. Okay, I will restore their fortune and will have mercy on them. Okay, this is God's promise, your Abba. And... <clears throat> I'll share a few more scriptures only. Proverbs 31, 14, uh, which is, she gives out rebel. You know what is Proverbs 31? It's about the? Uh, Proverbs 31 is about what? <laughs> no, no, no. No, what is, before you read, read this verse, okay? Proverbs 31, it's about the? The? The Solomon was writing about the wise woman. The pro have you never heard before? <laughs> he called that the Proverbs 31 woman. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, if you have been in church for a while, all right. I mean, not here, like anywhere. They will all like to talk about Proverbs 31. Okay. This woman of God who rises up early in the morning, who takes care of the family and all that. Ring a bell now. Okay, all right, so it is here, of course, one of this verse describing this 
a wise woman. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She is like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. Uh, how I came into this version is from a ship that came into my house. <laughs> okay, and as I went to study more about ship, well, let's see. So let's look at this verse because in the normal, it may not put like exactly like this, uh, or rather in the other version. So revelation truth is bread. This is con a consistent emblem of spiritual food, right? Nourishing your spirit man. Yes, good. Or supplies from far away. So you use spiritual food to feed others who are born again. Don't give them roti chanai every day only. Your children will not grow spiritually. They will grow physically fat. Okay? But we also need to grow spiritually. Okay? All supplies from far away. The implication is that the supplies come from another realm. Which realm? Spiritual realm. She is bringing heavenly manna for those whom she feed. This is the wise woman. You want to be the wise woman, the wise man of God? Yeah. One of the things is this woman give out revelation truth. You all not yet take in or so <laughs> how to give out. Okay. If you realize this is your destiny, all right, this is your, every woman's calling or man as well. Okay, because there's no man or woman in the eyes of God, or our sons and daughters or sons of God. This is what you are living for on this earth. One day, like a mother, you want to feed your children, right? We've got a lot of mothers here, physical food. Spiritual mother, what does a spiritual mother do? Feed spiritual food. Feed others. Okay, Be, Grow up to one day feed others. Feed with what? Divine revelation. Supplies that come from another realm. Like what I'm doing with you now. When you understand that you are rich in Christ daily, that He wants to give you abundance, yeah? you will begin to be fed in your spirit and it will overflow into your physical life. Okay, So, Jesus said what to uh, Peter? If you love me, uh, so are we all sheep that may, may, may need to eat grass? <laughs> right? What, who's, who, what, who is Jesus referring to? Sheep. All those who just got born again, they are sheep, meh, 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 right? Lost. And if we love God, we love Him because He loved us so much. Our desire is to be able to feed others, right? Feed the young sheep, not whack them. <laughs> feed them, okay? Feed them. Most important, mother is give milk, right? Give food, right? Yeah, so when you are a spiritual mother, right, you want to feed with heavenly manner. <clears throat> she is like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. I like the commentary here. Or like merchant ships bringing goods. Like a ship loaded with cargo, the bride of Christ. Are you the bride of Christ? Yes, the bride of Christ bring heavenly treasures to others. Okay, of course, I'm not against giving physical things and all that. But the main thing, we are spiritual beings. You are one who is able to bring heavenly treasures. All right, open people's eyes to the heavenly realm. Not just focus on a physical realm. There's a heavenly realm that we all one day will go to. <clears throat> heavenly treasures to others. The use of the term merchant points to Jesus Christ. He's described as a merchant in Matthew 13, 45 in the parable of the extraordinary pearl. The pearl is the church. It's Delia, Anderson, right? Or the believer which costs all that Jesus had, his blood to purchase us for you to become right his pearl right jesus paid with his blood have you ever paid for something you buy want to buy something in shopee and then they tell you okay use blood <laughs> no right none but jesus paid for us because why that taking the life of the person 
right? He said, I need how many gallons of blood? The fellow will die already, right? To buy this, uh, whatever, how valuable it is. But God, for us, we were so valuable that Jesus paid for you with his blood, right? That money cannot buy. See how precious you are, Delia, to, to our Lord Jesus? Hmm. Yeah, he bought you with his blood. It cost all that Jesus had to purchase us. That's why we belong to him. She brings, in another version, she brings special food from far away, like a ship that travels across the sea. I have a special passion for ship since I was very young, in my probably around your, your, the twins' age. Around that age, I remember I, I, I made a ship with sails with sails uh, using the lilin you all remember lilin oh then nowadays people don't know what's lilin right uh, uh, li, li what uh? lili ah yeah yeah that one is you put a rubber band and then you sweep the floor yeah so those days right we have those lili uh, it's called l i ah li li di yeah, I, I, I forgot it because it's like how many years ago? 40, 50 years ago. But I still remember because I made that ship with the lidi and the cloth to make the sail. And it was put inside my house. Of course, today I don't know. And I just love it. You know? And suddenly after 40, 50 years later, <laughs> I saw a ship. And that was in uh, Shira's house that day when we went. And she said she was just, you should all go and have a look. So big a ship, a few ships inside the her house. And it was a smaller one. And she said she was going to give it away, right, to her son or whoever. And I heard it and I was thinking, why she never offered to me one? <laughs> because she said she never expect a woman to like ship. You know, this ship. Mostly men. I don't know Anderson like or not. Or oh, yeah, a lot of men like. No, no, very few women. So I said, no, I like, I love it since I was small. <clears throat> and so I took it back. All right, now it's in my house. And from there, I recall back all the scriptures about ship. I went to check again because the ship has sailed into my house. And what is this ship? It brings food from far away. It travels across the sea. Okay, and <clears throat> Those days, they travel using ships, all right? And they are merchants after they bring all the, the work, a business, and then they put all in the ship and bring to different ports, all right, to uh, sell. And also, we have been learning, or rather, I recently discovered and taught you all in the, the uh, Neshama, the letter Nun, all right, which is your spirit man, the word for miracles is Ness. This uh, rabbi defines a nest as an action or miracle, okay? A miracle as an action from God is supernatural. You all want natural or supernatural? Uh, then you have to act, take supernatural actions, okay? You cannot say, I want supernatural miracles and we just follow our limited mindset to take, uh, do the normal things. Supernatural result from supernatural action. The word nest also means the sail of a boat. This one can remember or not? <laughs> I just thought <laughs> recently. Forgot already. Forgot already? In one of the, the, the last few uh, teachings on the Nachama, okay? Yes, it said uh, nest means miracles and nest also means the sail of a boat, right? That is your spirit man. Your spirit man is the one that can receive miracles. That can believe in miracles. Catherine Kuhlman said, I believe in miracles. Because you have to believe in miracles before you can see miracles. And many people say, I don't believe in miracles, correct? You, even yourself may think, no, 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 I hard earn money, I earn and earn money. I do it all through my own hard work. Then you don't believe in miracles. Okay, you just believe in the doctor, what the doctor can do, what the doctor cannot do. We are spirit beings. If you don't believe in miracles, you won't see miracles hmm? by God and true right in front of you. So the word nest also means the sail of a boat. The sail of a boat towers over the boat from above. The sail 
enables the boat to move along to travel in path. This actually is one of the slides for the Spirit Man session. <laughs> totally don't remember. <laughs> okay, that's why I put it back again. A miracle is an outward display of God's divine providence. Whether it's be healing or material, physical blessing, if it's a miracle, it's a divine providence. Means what? It comes from Daddy God. All right? It comes from above. It's supernatural. God's providence directs the movement of our lives and keeps us on the paths we have chosen. <clears throat> That's why the sail is very interesting. When one looks up at the billowing sail of a boat, one can see that there is a force controlling which way the boat is traveling. Unlike those ships of today, which is all motor, there's no more sail. It's the pilot who decides where they want to go. But those days, right, they have sailing boats. It's the wind that decides where they go, right? They just need to study the wind, north, south, east, west and flow with the wind. Sometimes the wind takes them another direction. This is how we are to be connected to the Holy Spirit. Let Him lead us, not you tell the Holy Spirit what to do, where to go. <laughs> I want to do this, God. Bless what I want to do. Huh? No. Be open in your spirit and say, Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me. Right? If this is not the, the direction that you want me, show me and lead me to the direction that you want me to go to. This is what we have, Holy Spirit, spiritual, where you can trust him. The sail of the boat, so when I, I can stare at the boat when I'm doing my preparation and all that and give, get a lot of revelation. Okay, now, who is controlling your direction or your decisions in life? Is it the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, or still your own self? When a person experiences a miracle, it becomes clear that there is a force controlling the direction of his life. The choice of the word nest to encapsulate the meaning behind a supernatural occurrence should not be lost on us. It means we ought to be like little children. You know little children? They are fascinated with things happening. Mommy, ooh, what is this? Huh? Right? And then when we come every day in our lives, a miracle happens right in front of you also, you don't realize. A miracle, that means God is the one who did it for you. And I love all your giving testimonies. That means you recognize and begin to see it is God, right? Elijah shared testimony, who else? Yeah. Every week when you share a testimony, you are saying that, there is miracle happening. There is God's hand upon your life. You begin to see God. Oh, I like this light, light, light. It's like uh, some, <laughs> some uh, lights from heaven like that. <laughs> and look at you. Okay, right. Recognize. If you don't recognize, you will go every day not realizing, yes, there is God in your life. And this is the spirit man. All right. When you become more and more aware of God, and you begin to want God. I, you know, I, can, I love to see spiritual babies desiring for God's milk. <laughs> and we see Dahlia here, hungry for God, just like a baby born. Milk, milk, milk. Right? They want milk. Right? Hungry for God. Because you really, you are a spirit. You are God's child. Right? And this is a miracle. What, Hannah, what's the latest miracle in your life? Why I had to think so long, right? Okay, you understand? Well, I ask this is not to uh, make you embarrassed or what. It's to help you realize, right? Till you see that God is with you in your work, in your house, at night, sleeping, in your home, everywhere. He's there. Yeah, we may be busy, we may have to work, yes. Right? But the consciousness of God, your spirit man, Right, will realize that God is doing something for you. And I like Madeline, although she's taking a rest, right, even her clothes can get dry. She knows it's a miracle. It is God doing for her to give her son, which always happened to me because I also wash clothes at home on certain days. And I always say, you know, just put there and then the sun comes out. And I say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> that it, because God is the one who gave the son. Do you take Notice of these little things in your life, right? Miracles that God do for you 
Yeah, we need to because if not, we will not realize. That's why nest is a supernatural occurrence. That no wait for big big one to testify. A revelation, a small. You may think it's small. I love you all sharing testimonies of so-called small things. Right? Even the toll free to others is ah yeah, it's the prime minister who give you the toll free la. Why you say God? They don't know. It is your God. This is very, very, this is essential in your growth as a man or woman who will live in miracles. Essential, very essential. If we don't realize the little things first that is happening in your life, it's God's hand moving. And then how you can ask, want to ask God for big things. It's the small things we cannot see God. How are you going to see God? Right? You, everything say coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. Right? You are a child of God. All right? The choice, this word miracle, is the supernatural realm. Supernatural realm. You are a supernatural being. Though God's Dachen abundance, which I have been covering for the last, since January uh, 7 or 8, right? The first Sunday. Right? This is what Holy Spirit gave to, to us all right? for, for this ministry. For everyone, it's about the fat abundance so it is three areas right the abundance just not just look at money only okay the physical one first remember i spoke on the anointing the oil of the holy spirit so we need the holy spirit correct the more anointing the more oil you have yeah this the abundance that he's pouring out and then who are the people receiving the second one, so I've already talked about that in the Acts chapter 1 and 2. The revelation truth of God's word is abundant, needs to be abundant in your life, not scarce. <laughs> I ask you for one word. It's like so hard to find the word like that. What is your favorite promise? Delia. Which verse? Which word of God? So far. If don't, it's okay if you cannot quote the text or where it comes from. But something about that verse that you like, that has quickened your spirit. Uh, okay, uh, roughly. Uh, by his stripes. I am healed. Yeah, spirit, spirit, soul, and body, every part of you, physical, mental, your, your mind, everything has been healed. Yes, good. Okay, yeah. Okay, any revelation, Hannah? Mm, yes, you. You only one Hannah here so far. <laughs> Later on, there will be more Hannahs, but right now, only got one. You tell me what it is. So what does it mean to you? Okay. <clears throat> so that is a revelation uh, for which area of your life? No, no, area of your life. Yeah. Why, why this verse speak to you, this scripture? What is the revelation and how did you apply it? <clears throat> okay. Okay, so you were very concerned about your behavior. <laughs> your, your own nature. And that's why this uh, speaks to you, to the, about the new nature. Okay, all right. Any, anyone else? <clears throat> revelation, revelation. You see, if you want, yeah, different things happening in your life, say good, there's an, an aspect of your uh, life, right? New nature, old nature, of healing. Mm. Anyone else? 
Oh, okay, good. Uh, Rachel, so Rachel has, what is the revelation there? Ah, God give you strength, right, to do everything. Okay, so it seems more uh, you all are into the strength and the uh, uh, behavior. Okay, any more? Uh huh. Okay. Have okay. Have you asked for anything? Okay, all right. So that is the uh, one of your uh, favorite verses with Revelation. Anything else? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well done, well done. Okay, all right. So we give the uncle, auntie uh, some chances, okay? Yeah, how about Uncle Elijah? <laughs> Mm. Mm. And, what, and what has that done for you? What is the revelation? Huh? Oh, you fear the future. Okay, so now not so fearful of the future. Uh, what about the future that you are scared of? Last time, what was it you were scared of? Lack. Okay. Any, anything else? <laughs> oh <laughs> okay that scripture is it <laughs> it's okay it's okay okay they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength okay all right okay they will not go weary okay it seems that none of you are interested in wealth none of you are interested in wealth in money why <laughs> because the main thing, I mean, one of the things, okay, it's, it's not that you all don't have, okay, when I say something, it doesn't mean you don't have the other thing, don't take it the other way around. What I'm saying is that the thing that worries everyone is money. And why are you not meditating on those scriptures to have a revelation of God providing for you? No, you also need the scripture, okay? Because times will come, right, where testing and the devil, the thoughts of your past will come to you. You sure? You sure you want to give? You sure God can take care on this aspect of life? It comes. Come on. <laughs> I'm real, right? Even sometimes these thoughts can come. All right, and why is there no abundance? It's because there is no revelation. Okay, yes, we are happy with the normal provision. Uh, Lack is not a, f a feeling, <laughs> it's a thought. It will come at any time in your life. Okay? Yeah, I'm, fine, fine. Yeah, just I'm asking that revelation. That revelation of their confidence in Christ. It's just last week I asked Hannah, do you really know that God is your father? That's a revelation. Because if you know that God is your father, I'm talking about revelation, okay? Not just uh, about knowledge of certain scriptures. That's fine. And whatever you have done in faith is fine. But a revelation is, it, it causes you to do things that you never do before. It causes you when the Holy Spirit say, okay, don't misunderstand me. I'm not asking you to put in money or whatever. Okay, when a revelation comes in, Right, that God is truly your father, and who is this God? 
He is El Elyon. He's possessed of heaven and earth and all that. What will happen when the Holy Spirit speaks to you to put in a certain sum of money? Yeah, what I'm saying is, okay, you will dare to do things that you won't dare to do. Yeah, normally, normally we stick to, okay, 10% and say, oh, I'm very good already. I already give my 10% of my earnings. Yeah, that is up to there only. What if you want more abundance, more to come? It's more sowing, more hearing Holy Spirit. Now, this is not asking anyone to give or what. I'm talking about revelation. And then without the fear that, Ayo, tomorrow how? Maybe this money maybe I save for uh, buying this or, what, or for my children's education, whatever. You see, God may come. I'm telling you from the Bible as well as from experience. He may come and may challenge those ones that he was going to pour out an abundance which is beyond normal. But it comes with a a challenge where you need to have that revelation that God is your father. God is my father. If he asks me to give this amount, he will take care of me for the next few days or months or even if it doesn't come, I know he is my father. That kind of knowing. Okay, so it's not just the, uh, I don't undermine that you have the word. More than anybody else in this world, as your shepherd, I know you all more. Okay? I know you all, know your, your spiritual uh, s s growth everywhere, every part. More than I believe because your mother knows you the most, right? <laughs> the one who, who took care of you, who gave birth to you, right? So, of course, putting God who knows you, but as your pastor, that's what a pastor should do, right? Should be able to know the growth of their children. Okay, so of course I know, all right, where your spiritual growth is, which level. I'm not here to make you grow faster than you can grow, but to feed you. All right, and if I tell you that you don't have the revelation yet, it means you don't have yet. Okay, it means you're not yet, or just got a bit, not yet. But of course there is changes, there's transformation, beautiful growth that I've seen in each one of you. Wonderful. Praise God for it. Right? Because you got input, ma. <laughs> you got input, you should grow. But revelation is another thing. Revelation is very different. When it happens, can see one. <laughs> can see. Of course, I'm not saying you all totally don't have revelation or a little bit, a little bit. But more revelation, more things will happen, more miracles. Because revelation, spiritual realm. Right? The rest that is not revelation, just knowledge, you can have knowledge, you will still be operating in the physical realm. Okay? So it don't don't I don't mean that you all don't know God's word. Okay? But revelation is the I know God is my God, is my father. More and more. Okay, so don't be anxious, don't worry. I'm not saying you all don't know anything. Okay, but I'm saying that keep on eating, keep on asking Holy Spirit because revelation comes from Holy Spirit. The one day when I was uh, probably maybe 18, uh, maybe in my teenage, teenage, in my house in Penang, my father's house, <clears throat> I was opening the fridge, the old fridge door. <clears throat> Those days old one, uh, the fridge can electricity can even go in one. <clears throat> and then I suddenly felt an overwhelming uh, of this scripture. The father himself loves you. As a young girl, the father himself loves you. It is one of the words in John. At that was a time that I felt so deep in my heart. I don't, know, I, I don't know whether I cried or whatever, but just standing by that door, I was stuck there for a while. So awed with that God himself, that my father himself loves me. Yeah? Of course, throughout the journey, he again manifests. But that point, I can pinpoint that particular point where God 
gave me that revelation and it touched me so powerfully with one few, uh, one single verse. Even the love of God has to come by revelation. The love of God for you. Why would a person give up everything to go out to serve the Lord? If it is not the revelation of God's love for him, why would he give up? No one without a revelation would want to give up earning money, sometimes good money in the business world, give up and just go and be a missionary in an unknown country. Where did all these preachers, ministers come from? I'm not saying everyone ought to give up. It's not about have to or ought to or what. It's the revelation that hit a person. Yeah, that this life has no purpose until I live it for Jesus. Okay, the other person, no need to feel condemned. But the one who has the revelation that his God is the eternal El Olam, and there's nothing worth living for except for Jesus. What did he has? He possessed a revelation. Okay. Yeah, the revelation of God's truth. What happened to the 12 disciples, apostles, 120? Yeah, they went out. Okay, so don't tell me that the church of Jesus Christ has revelation and they are sitting on their couch <laughs> every day. Okay, again, I'm not condemning anyone. Each one can take their time up to them. But when that revelation comes, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and it's not that you won't have money, yeah? where God sends, he will provide. He will be the one who take care of your needs, just as oh, you see how all the apostles were taken care of, physically, financially, materially. Yeah? But this is very crucial in our Christian walk with God. It's not an accumulation of Bible knowledge. It's an accumulation of revelation of who you are, Nathaniel Go. You look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a revelation that caused him to come even when he's sick and not well, to still come out from the house and come and stand here when I, when I pray for him. I will never forget that moment when I saw him so weak and then, okay, now mind you sit there and pray for you. No, 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 I want to come up. Wow, <laughs> that is a revelation. All right, that God can heal him, that God is real. Okay, these are things that people do not normal when they have a revelation of who God is. Right, what we think we are already doing a lot for God. I'm sorry to tell you, it's not a lot. It's nothing, right, compared to what Jesus has done for us and what happened to the disciples in the book of Acts. It's still very little. Yeah, but it's not for everyone, may not be for everyone. And therefore, I don't push everyone to do, to do this, do that, do that for God. And I only also teach no condemnation, right? Yeah, but it's to help you to realize that we actually, most actually just touch the brim only of what God wants to lead you further into, Sister Ruth. Amen? Yes. There come a time when you have a revelation of the love of Jesus, of the love of God for you, Delia. You, you, are the, you are what the world calls crazy. But I'll never teach you to be crazy in a you know, ridiculous way. Yeah, crazy for the Lord. Crazy for souls because he put it there. You have a revelation of who you are, your purpose and destiny in life. All the whatever was from this earth, you still do, I mean, you still take care of your children, all right, don't be crazy until you are, you are irresponsible, that's nonsense, all right, okay, but while being responsible in this earthly life, your passion, your zeal, your fire is all God, and that's where the, the fivefold ministry is to equip the church for the work of the ministry, for what? To have lovey-dovey time together only every week, celebrate, celebrate, coffee and cakes. 
the ultimate purpose that Paul says, and also the destiny for every son and daughter of God, <laughs> is to serve, do the will of the Father. And how the apostles were given, the apostles, the fivefold ministry of the church was to do this one thing and see whether they are still doing it to equip the saints for the work of the ministry to equip the saints for the work of the ministry to equip the saints for the work of the ministry that means more and more christians children of god will be doing the ministry but if there is so few doing the ministry the equipping the five four have failed in their job isn't it if there are 10 here and 10 are in the ministry, going out into the ministry, that is success. You can have 1,000 and only one or maybe none are doing the work of the ministry. That is a failure of the, of the fivefold ministry. Do you understand? Yeah, our ultimate purpose in life is to know him, the author and finisher of our faith, and to serve him until he come for us or we go to see him and that is from your spirit man it will never align with your mind your mind will say ah no la, no la, that's not for me it's your spirit man if god has called you and chosen you to be equipped for this ministry of serving jesus christ beauty for ashes ministry to give beauty for ashes to people to set the captives free to preach the gospel right then god will, holy spirit will touch your heart your spirit man and you will grow with the food that is for spirit man amen <clears throat> and the last one is the divine supply of abundant provision god wants to sub divinely supply our material financial needs on this earth genesis 27 28 thank you uh, which i personalized and put it into the post into the WhatsApp post. Thank you, Abba Father, that in Christ you have given us, He has given us already heaven's dew, the fatness of the earth, abundance of grain and wine. This is promise of Abraham. This is what He has given. This is, remember, the blessing that uh, who gave to who? Jacob. Yes. Isaac gave to Jacob, right? He was waiting for, he had to deceive the father, he had to do all those things to get this blessing. Will you do all <laughs> for this blessing of words only? Or you are still, we are still in material, material, material. Thank you. In Christ, he has given heaven's due. We have Talia here. The fatness of the all represented here, all the blessings of God. Abundance of grain and wine, right? Moshmon, fatness, fertile place, richly prepared food, olive oil. Dahlia, you will be eating olive oil. <laughs> olive oil are for God's children. Yeah, believe God. If you believe it or not, say, oh, no, 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 olive oil, very expensive. You see, when we still have this kind of thinking, how are we going to go into the abundance of blessing? You understand? It's so hard to go through that old mind that says, I can't afford, I can't afford. Yes, I'm not asking you to be spendthrift. But I'm asking you to believe God's word. Believe until it happens. Right? That's why the confession, the meditation is you are speaking things that if your mind don't believe, you will say, after a while, I don't want to confess already. Isn't it? Your mind tells you, I have to confess that this. Lah. I don't, but uh, the next thing you do is, olive oil cannot, lah. very expensive. That one also cannot, lah. very expensive. This also cannot, lah. very expensive. If we keep thinking like that, how is miracles and abundance going to happen? Hmm? First, believe. All right? Believe, speak. Believe in your heart. This is what God has for us. And where to believe from your spirit man. Okay? And then it also says this word mash man, mash man, mash, mash, not mash mellow, mash man. All right? It also means stout or vigorous, fertile spots or places, a rich dish, oil, fat, a fertile field, and a robust man like this. <laughs> okay? You're all robust. Need to be robust in your spirit man. 
strong in the spirit. It doesn't matter if you are already 70, 80 years old, whatever age you are. Spirit man need to be strong. And spirit man need to be fat. Yeah. Eat, eat what type of food? Spirit food. Amen? Amen. Okay. This is the deep. third one. Abundance. First one is abundance of... No, no, no. <laughs> the first. Oh, Holy Spirit. We need Holy Spirit. Okay, without Holy Spirit, cannot. Right? Because without Holy Spirit, no revelation. Without revelation, no abundance. No abundance will flow if you don't have revelation. How? Okay? First, Holy Spirit give you revelation, right, of who you are, who God is, and you begin to believe and act on those revelations of God's word. And the last that will flow is the divine supply in your life so that you don't need to be concerned about material things and you can go and do the ministry, the work of the ministry. Amen?